Hey good people, today we're doing a quick breakdown of the mis- and disinformation bill proposed by Labor in 2023. If you want a more in-depth breakdown, check out my longer video that I posted yesterday, links in the description. Okay, so here we have the full title, which is Communications Legislation Amendment Combating Misinformation and Disinformation Bill 2023, or the mis -dis Bill for short a bill for an act to amend the law relating to communications and for related purposes. Here we have the simplified outline of the schedule. If you want to read it, pause the video now, check out what it has to say. There's this page and then it continues onto this page. Every bill starts off with its definitions. Here's a really important and interesting point. Within content, so they've defined content and they've made it extremely waterproof. This is airtight. So there is no room for anybody to come in with a clever interpretation and be like, well, you know, uh, memes don't count. Yes, they do. See part D, whether in the form of visual Im images, animated or otherwise. So your memes and your GIFs, anything like that could be con uh, considered mis- and disinformation within this bill. Excluded content for misinformation purposes. So excluded content is any content that's produced in good faith. What's good faith? That's fairly ambiguous, open to interpretation which is kind of interesting. The other thing that's excluded is professional news content. If I'm to believe that missing disinformation is, is harmful to Australia, uh, then why does it matter who produces it, whether that be me or somebody on X or somebody uh, within professional news on 7 or 9? Here we have their definition of harm. It's quite broad. It includes hatred against different kinds of groups, being ethnicity, race, gender, sexual orientation, all the different Venn diagrams that you can break people down into. Within this definition, I don't think there is anything that could be said that couldn't be misconstrued as harm if you had such intentions as proving somebody is a bad faith actor. This is concerning. The minister may, by legislative instrument, specify that a digital platform service is an excluded service for misinformation purposes. So it's rather concerning that an elected official can determine which platforms will fall and won't fall under this legislation. And we could, we could envision a situation in which a minister had a preferred platform and gave them special treatment. And in fact, flicking over to the Liberal Minister's page. Now, I'll put out there, I'm not a big fan of Liberal, I'm not a big fan of Labor either, but this is the Liberal response to Labor's proposed. And in here, their final dot point is, if the Minister has a favoured digital platform, then that platform could be entirely removed from the application of the misinformation laws. So they picked up on the same concerns that I have. This section here is about privacy. Before the ACMA makes a digital platform rule for the purposes of this clause in relation to a digital platform service, the ACMA must consider the privacy of end users. Now, if you're dragged in front of a jury and you ask the ACMA, did you consider their privacy? And they respond, yes, we did consider their privacy. Well, that's the end. Box ticked, they considered it, move on. It doesn't matter if they consider it and went, yeah, we considered it and we were definitely sure that we were going to violate their privacy. All right, well, I guess you did your required diligence. Be on your way. Incorrect records. So this part is mainly interesting because if you provide false or misleading information or omit certain matters when providing information to the ACMA, being like YouTube or X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Meta, uh, if you're providing information to them then and you provide anything that's misleading, you could cop 100 penalty points worth of fine. What's 100 penalty points equal to? Well, I've done the math here. It equals $27,500. How did I figure that out? If we flick over to the Combating Mis- and Disinformation Bill fact sheet, then we can scroll down to this point here where we talk about penalties. Now, the fact sheet is just a, an accompanying document. This isn't the law. This is just a six page breakdown of the 60 page legislation. Now you can see that I've done the math here and one point is equal to $275. You can see here's an example where maximum penalty of 25,000 penalty points, which is equal to $6.88 million or 5% of global turnover, whichever is greater for corporations. Uh, that provides a massive incentive for corporations such as YouTube or Meta or X to uh, to comply with these with this legislation.
Division 3 just gives the ACMA powers to collect information from platforms such as YouTube, Meta and X, formerly known as Twitter. Important note, however, a notice cannot require a person to give information or evidence or produce a document or copy that would reveal the content of private messages. So private messages are protected. Now this part here is rather interesting. Section 21, self-incrimination. An individual is not excused from giving information or evidence on the ground that giving the information or evidence might tend to incriminate the individual in relation to an offence. Now, it's one of the oldest pieces of philosophical law to be able to be, um, to, to not have to incriminate yourself or not have to do the prosecutor's job for them. Uh, so it's interesting that that is, uh, that's not a protection that's afforded to you within this bill. I wonder if um, they'll also remove spousal protection. And again, maybe I shouldn't say that out loud, given bad ideas. Section 33 has some examples of what may be considered mis- and disinformation within codes and standards. Here's an interesting one, supporting fact checking. Now, you may not know, but Meta will pay $800 per explanatory article for up to 50 articles per month for a maximum monthly total payment of $40,000. That's within the contract of RMIT University. Now, it's interesting because since I posted my video yesterday, uh, that has actually changed. If we go into X and the Sky News page and then follow it over to the link here, we read the title, Facebook suspends Australian fact-checking operation amid foreign influence scandal uncovered by fact-check files. So since yesterday, uh, Sky News has done an investigation. I believe it's in some sort of conjunction with RV Yemeni. Uh, and these have been dubbed the fact-check files, which reveal the university's fact-checking director, Russell Skelton, was campaigning for the voice and resharing slogans and images created by Labor's Indigenous Affairs Minister, Linda Burney. The article goes on. Uh, I'll let you read it yourself. Links in the description. I guess the important thing to take away from that is the fact checkers of yesterday are not the fact checkers of today, literally. Section 45 talks about briefly uh, freedom of political communication gives the ACMA the power to determine whether the standard would burden freedom of political communication, and if so, whether the burden would be reasonable and not excessive. Now, who gets to determine what's reasonable and what's excessive? Well, the head of the ACMA is Nerida O'Loughlin, and she employs about 450 people within the ACMA across uh, Sydney, Canberra, and Melbourne. Section 60 talks about the implied freedom of political communication within Australia. Notice that it says implied because within Australia, we don't have a Bill of Rights. We don't have within our constitution, the First Amendment or anything that is like the First Amendment, which gives the Australian people some sort of protection over our freedom of speech and freedom of communication. However, it's implied. Uh, interesting that they're quite happy to highlight that within this document. Section 64 is about the digital rules that platforms can provide. So X, formerly known as Twitter, YouTube, Meta, any of these companies cannot create rules that would give them the power to arrest, detain, uh, enter your property, searches and seizures, or impose a tax. Now that's, to be clear, that's talking about X, Twitter, uh, YouTube, Meta, any of those companies. However, the ACMA powers may be able to do those things. It's just that YouTube can't do that to you. Now, I absolutely agree that <clears throat> any online platform shouldn't be able to do those things, but I also don't think the ACMA should be able to do those things for mis- and disinformation. Now, that's all of the really interesting points within the Exposure Draft Bill. Let's have a look at some of the other things that are surrounding it. Now, I've mentioned the fact sheet once before, but let's have a look at some of the interesting things that are contained within it. So here's a brief description of what mis- and disinformation could be. Pause the video now if you want to have a read of this. Otherwise, links are in the description. Now here we've got their idea of what serious harm is. I normally think of harm as theft, fraud, or violence, or the threat of violence. Uh, but here we've got one example, which includes inciting other persons to commit hate crimes. But I think we've already got laws regards that. Uh, if somebody drink drives, we don't blame the alcohol, we, break, we blame the driver. And if somebody commits a hate crime, we probably shouldn't be blaming somebody that they say incited them. We should be blaming and prosecuting the person who committed the act of hate. 
Again, here we have an exemption, which is for ABC iView, ABC being a government media organization. Uh, why should they be exempt from presenting mis and disinformation? Is the mis and disinformation that they present okay and somebody else's is not? Freedom of expression within this fact sheet. The ACMA would have no role in determining truthfulness. Well, then who does? I really hope it's not politicians because we all know that they're self-interested and I like less than 50% and the 50% that get elected are not the 50% that I always vote for. And even if the ones that I vote for get in this time, you can be sure that the powers will transfer to the other team next year because it just oscillates between red and blue, both in my country, the UK, Canada, America. I don't want anybody to have these powers. Again, here we see that the proposed bill's powers will not extend to professional news content. I wonder where someone gets one of these professional news content passes. Maybe I can apply for one and then I can say whatever I want. And also interestingly, the code and standard making powers will not apply to the electoral and referendum communications that are required to be authorized. So does that mean that uh, politicians from both sides can just sling mud as they have done for the past hundred years and nothing they say is considered mis and disinformation? If mis and disinformation is harmful, I would think that the highest governing body within this country espousing things that are not true could seriously harm the country, especially when we're then asked to vote on the information we've been provided. And just quickly before wrapping up, we'll touch on three organisations that have commented on this legislation. Here we have the Human Rights Law Alliance. They state that they are extremely concerned about the draft legislation uh, by the federal government, which would give government bureaucrats extraordinary regulatory powers to police online content and remove information it considers to be harmful. I think that's a fair assessment of what this legislation is going to do. Now we have the Human Rights Law Centre, which interestingly, their statement is Australia trailing big tech as disinformation spreads like wildfire on our democracy. The ACMA should instead be given sufficient powers to regulate social media platforms effective immediately. So the, a human rights law center is actually advocating for us to don't worry about passing this exposure draft bill to the public and then as a draft bill and then as a bill, they want these powers to be given to the ACMA effective immediately. Strong words and an interesting take from the Human Rights Law Centre. Okay, so that is the Mis and Disinformation Bill proposed by Labor in 2023. Tell me what you think. Do you think that the government has the ability to always correctly identify what is mis and disinformation from year to year? Do you think that mis and disinformation or truthfulness or the truth changes over time? And do you think that they'll be able to correctly identify it? Do you want them to have this kind of power? I know what I think. Tell me what you think in the comments below. And remember, you were born free.